Hey everyone, I'm Kent, the lead designer for TFT's upcoming set. And I'm here to talk a bit about what you can expect. Then I'll hand things over to Mariah, one of our cosmetics producers, and Michael Sherman, our head of esports. TFT has taken us to some wild places since our first set. And if I'm being honest, we've gotten a little bit homesick. So I'm excited to say that we're heading back home to Rune Terra. But let me be clear. This time around, things will be a little bit different. An epic storm has torn Runeterra asunder and brought together pieces in the convergence. Sand from Shrima fills the once howling abyss. Hiltoven technology has been found littered across the Ionian Islands. And while this might look like chaos to Runeterrans, tacticians couldn't be more thrilled about the endless opportunities. Welcome to Runeterra Reforged. With the Convergence Storm, portals have granted access to places across Runeterra. At the start of each game, you can vote on one of three portals that'll take you to a different region. Everyone gets one vote, and all votes are weighted equally. One vote from the eight is then chosen randomly each round. So even if seven players voted for Bandle City's Scuttle Puddle, you still might end up in the Shadow Isles because one of the players voted for it. So get ready, because our region portal system is about to add a lot of creative conversation to the early game. I can see a new emo and ping meta happening in the first patch. Now that you know how portals work, let's go over a couple locations. Journeying through one of Shurima's portals takes you to the Warlord's Bazaar, transforming a later PvE round into a loot-filled treasure armory. Or you could find yourself in the God Willow's Grove of Ionia. Here, a spot on your bench becomes the Grove. Champions on the spot contribute their traits as though they were in your active army. Now that's what I call a trait bot. Maybe you head to the hallowed halls of the University of Piltover, giving you unlimited augment rerolls for a price. We have a lot more planned for each region of Runeterra, and we really can't wait for you to see what's in store. With our return to Runeterra, we have new traits that highlight the fantasies of each region. Conquer your enemies with Noxus, whose units gain bonus stats that increase in power as you beat other players in the lobby. Field the undead Juggernaut Scion to take over in the late game with his unstoppable onslaught. And for the more econ-minded, make sure your portfolios are vested in Piltoven tech with a cash-out system that grants you an invention and some tools. Try to buy the dip and obtain the T-Hex, whose Gatling gun arm and rocket arm can do everything but hug. If transcendent powers are more to your speed, you can find that in Shurima. Build your sun disk and ascend your units to gain large stat bonuses. But don't sleep on the ancient empire. The sun disk can do more than just grant power with the right augment. The Yordles of Bandle City gain a stacking bonus at each star level and can even reach four stars. While their one, two, and three star variants will grant additional stat bonuses, at four stars, their ability upgrades to a whole nother level. With the Void, you can summon help from below, like the Cute Void Remora, the Rift Herald, and yep, even Baron Nasher. Baron posed a bit of a challenge for the team because if you've ever played Summoner's Rift, you've never really seen Baron's back. But don't worry, we've got you covered. In TFT, Baron's got back, literally. While region portals are our set mechanic for Runeterra Reforged, we're also introducing a new feature for the set. Hero augments are out, and we've got a new way to give every player more control over their destiny. Introducing Legends. Think of Legends as providing an upgrade to the existing augment system. Similar to how you select your lovable Chibi Lilia in the loadout screen, or a tactician that actually exists, you'll now be able to select one of your favorite Legends. Legends will influence some of the augments you're offered throughout the game based on your selected playstyle. Before the game starts, you'll pick your favorite character who will guarantee you one of their most beneficial augments at each stage. For example, at 2-1, Tom Kench will offer Rich Get Richer as one of your options. Then at 3-2 and 4-2, he'll give you a choice for a bunch of gold. But if you're wary of making a bargain with the River King this game, you'll also get one free reroll for each augment tier. These improvements both give you more variety and options, but also the ability to safely plan your comp knowing what your future augments hold. If you're not motivated by gold, selecting Orn as your legend gives you access to his stash of powerful artifacts through augments like Portable Forge, Living Forge, and brand new artifact-related augments. Maybe you want to go super vertical, 
or come up with powerful new trait combinations. That's where Earth comes in. Selecting the original golden spatula wielder as your legend provides options for a veritable horde of emblems. We're super excited about all the opportunities legends offer, and we can't wait to see what you think of them. Augments have come a long way since gizmos and gadgets. Back in those days, we had some major augment diffs and not a single reroll in sight. We know players largely love augments as a core mechanic, so we thought, why not more? In Runeterra Reforged, we're refreshing a grand total of 90% of our generic augments. We've already had three sets with our current augment roster. We've all seen Celestial Blessing, Thrill of the Hunt, Cybernetic Enhancements, all the time. So we're more than ready for something brand new. In addition to the refresh, we're also bringing back trait-linked augments for all of our new traits to freshen things up even more. TFT is a complex game. We know that we can do more to make the experience smoother, especially for new players or folks that may have taken a break between sets. To this end, we've got a couple usability improvements to make things better. First, and most visible, is our Champion Inspect tool. Moving this panel has allowed us to add a boatload of new features while maintaining combat clarity. The new inspection tool shows you what type of damage your champion does, what items work well on them, their stats, spell information, and their range. Oh, and you can even inspect champions on the carousel as well. No more, who the heck is that at the start of a new set? Additionally, we enhance our trait tracker. You can now interact with champions inside of trait tooltips to learn more about them. And you can even see the trait's emblem and emblem recipe. Quality of life improved. You've wanted these features for a long time, so the UX team really appreciates your patience and is so happy to get them to you now. But we also know that change is hard, so we'll continue to keep an eye out for your feedback around this. <sighs> All right, that was a lot. If it's starting to feel like Runeterra Reforge is our most extensive set to date, that's probably because it is, and we still have more to share. For now though, it's time to pass the mic to Mariah. Take it away. Hello everyone, Mariah here. It's so good to be back to share what the team's been working on for Runeterra Reforged. This set is about exploring a fragmented and chaotic version of Runeterra that can only exist in TFT. And who's more armed and ready to scout ahead in the middle of a convergence storm than Timo? That's right, Chibi Timo is coming to TFT. And enemy HP isn't the only thing he's been shredding. Let's check out some other tacticians before revealing Timo's mythic variant. Also ready to explore are our new Summoner's Rift inspired River Sprite. This time, we have two. One is the embodiment of a consumable item, but please don't drink them. The other is an eager explorer armed with some familiar magical items. We've also brought one of the most contested jungle camps, Raptors, into TFT. Of course, we're giving them the TFT treatment and ensuring they're too cute to smite. We've also got Poros joining the tactician roster. We're so thrilled to bring Runeterra's most beloved froth balls into TFT. And they'll be exploring more than just Summoner's Rift. With arenas that takes tacticians to places across Runeterra, like the Reckoning Arena, which takes you to one of the locations from the 2019 League of Legends cinematic, Awaken, where Riven and Draven exchanged more than just mean glances. Our mythic arena takes you to the Shrine of the First Lands in Ionia. As scenic as the landscape is, what really makes this arena special is whenever you win around, a sword drops from the sky, piercing your arena as a reminder of every fall you fell throughout the game. How many swords can you collect? And finally, our mythic chibi variant for Timo. Just like on Summoner's Rift, Timo can either be your angel or your devil. And here's the last thing your enemy will see before you snuff out any hope they had at a victory screen. <laughs> um, Mariah? Hey, can someone check on Mariah? I think she was supposed to introduce me. Well, anyways, hello tacticians. Sherman here to talk about TFT Esports. 
But first, a little background. When I first joined the TFT team, I spent a lot of time listening and talking to other members of the team and to the community. Players from all over the world told me they love a lot about the game. The cute GB champions, the memes, and of course, the competition. We all love the payoff of high stakes pivots that take us from an eighth to a first. The rush from climbing the rank ladder and outsmarting our opponents along the way. We also realize that we have a unique advantage because TFT doesn't rely on high tick rate servers or ultra fast internet. And it's mostly based on your own individual performance. So it's easy to pick up and climb the ladder no matter where you are or what platform you're playing on. That's why we've been able to play all of our set championships online with players from all around the world. We want the future of TFT Esports to embody that accessibility and diversity of skill. And that starts by expanding our esports events, opening more of them to anyone who wants to compete. To kick this new approach off, we're getting experimental. I'm super excited to announce that this December, we'll be hosting our very first global LAN event in Las Vegas. It'll take place from December 8th through the 10th, which is just a few weeks after our 10th set launches. Taking some notes from the FGC, we're hosting an open bracket event with 512 spots up for grabs. You can claim yours by purchasing a competitor pass to compete in person at the MGM Grand and earn your place as a top tactician. Unlike set championships, this event will celebrate your ability to quickly adapt to a new set rather than your mastery at the end of one. That means it's your shot at defining and refining the new meta. You know what they say, metas that happen in Vegas, continue after Vegas, so, so, something like that. While there, you'll have a chance to play alongside your favorite creators and pros, and who knows, maybe you'll take the stage against some of them. And don't worry, we'll still be holding set championships, so keep an eye out for more info towards the end of Runeterra Reforged. We'll be back later this year with more information about how to purchase passes. There will be some priority given to players based on their rank, so be sure to start climbing for a better shot at a pass when they're available. All right, that's it for me. Best of luck, and we can't wait to see you in Vegas and enjoy Runeterra Reforged. <laughs>